We're back, we're back with the Kyle Brown Podcast, and I'm super excited to be here today with another special guest. Uh Uh, We're in the heart of Charlotte, and I'm with my guy, Timothy Nurse, who's joining me on the Kyle Brown Podcast. Someone that I have observed, someone I have witnessed. I've been a part of a number of things that he's done. I'm super excited to be able to have him on the podcast today. Thank you, thank you. Um, Timothy Nurse is a local banker, uh, philanthropic um, hero, I would say, in the community, (laughs) because he's helped me in a number of ways, and a curator of events here in Charlotte. So I'm really, really um, elated to have him on the podcast today uh, to talk about a number of things. Um, If I didn't say it yet, Tim is one of the best networkers that I know in the city of Charlotte, and just in general, um, based on people that I've met, and that's probably from where he's from, because where he's from, there are a lot of people who really know how to move in a lot of different spaces. So, Tim, thank you again for yes. being on the show. Yes. Super excited to be able to just have a conversation with you about networking, how you built a number of different platforms here mm-hmm. in Charlotte, and just how you've been able to navigate um, the corporate world along with the social world and a number of platforms that you've been able to build. So if you could, just introduce yourself to the audience and yeah. uh, we'll get it kicked off. So first, thank you for having me on the show. Mm-hmm. KBP, I done made it, y'all, I done <laughs> made it, you know what I'm saying? Um, so Timothy Nurse, born and raised Brooklyn, New York, uh, live out here in Charlotte. And uh, like you said, I do work at one of the local uh, organizations out here. Uh, I enjoy hosting events. Uh, mix and mingles, boot camps. Uh, we've had a couple of um, couples mixers and uh, things of that nature. It's about just getting people together, like-minded individuals, and help to give back to the less fortunate. So that's what I'm all about. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that, man, uh, just giving the audience a little bit more about you. So I love to get right into it. I moved here about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Pandemic hit. Yes. I could not get out of the house. It absolutely blew me. I, I love to be able to get out, network, meet people, mm-hmm. get to know people outside of the people that I've been knowing. So yes. I went to school at Winston Salem State. Yep. It's about an hour from Close here. By. Yep. So when I moved here, all of the people that I met are that I was linking with were from Winston Salem State. Mm-hmm. That didn't sit well with me. Mm-hmm. I already know these people. I've yeah. been to school with them for a year. Yeah. I know the alumni associate. I know the people around me. And I'm big on meeting new people and seeing where we can build relationships and build a number of things from there. My wife, uh, she started working at the same place as you. Mm-hmm. And she told me a story how there was a guy that put time on her calendar <laughs> immediately. And I thought that was super. What? <laughs> I ain't looking at it crazy. I ain't looking at it crazy, too. Uh, it's all good. But I thought it was really interesting because I'm that type of guy. I'm trying to become that type of guy, yeah, too. When yeah. there's a new employee that starts in my yep. job, welcome the man. Yep. So I loved how you did that to yeah. her. Yes. She was in the middle of the pandemic. Yes. She didn't know how to navigate the space mm-hmm. because she was at home. And you put that time on her calendar, and I could tell that was a level of comfort that she had by starting at the organization. Yeah. So um, you, I consider a master networker. Talk to me about you know your networking ability, why you believe networking is important, and doing small things like that of putting time on someone's calendar when okay. they first started an organization. I, why is that important to you? I, I, I want to talk about a story that I went through first. I'm gonna say a quick story. So. Um, I was working um, and on, a, on a specific team, had my manager, my one-on-one, uh, walked into the meeting, uh, had a conversation with him, and in that one-on-one meeting, he handed me a white envelope. said, hey, Timothy, uh, sorry to let you know, but um, today's your last day. And I was let go. I was, I was getting fired. Yeah. And it was a very shocking moment for me, very pulled back. Uh, me and my wife just got married around that time. And uh, I called up, said, hey, babe, you wouldn't believe it just happened. I told her, I just got let go. She started laughing, thought I was joking. I said, no, seriously, this is what happened. Why is she laughing? <laughs> we, uh, we, she just thought you were... We actually joked about something like this a little bit earlier, so she thought I was kind of just playing, okay. playing, playing, on, playing on something that we actually talked about that actually came to fruition. But anyway, <laughs> um, what ended up happening was she said, reach out to you. Well, we talked about reaching out to my network and seeing what I can do. And within five days, I had five verbal offers mm-hmm. of the strength of my network. That's when my eyes opened up to like, wow, this networking thing is really powerful. Yeah. And ever since then, I've been taking networking a lot more seriously. Um, equally as serious as my day-to-day job. Um, the more you know, the more you're worth. If you know people that's worth more money, then you're technically could make that money as well. So that's, that, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, Got exactly. It. So that was, it was almost like a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call. It was a starting, it was a starting point. Uh, so you had already 
kind of built a strong network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So prior to that event happening, I was meeting with executives uh, on a periodic basis, probably like on a quarterly or mm -hmm. biannual basis, having conversations personal and professional. And um, I fine tuned it over the years. But prior to that event happening, I did have a network of executives and I, I just did it naturally. Yeah. But I took it more seriously after that event. And then years later now, I have a plethora of executives across many different organizations that um, tell me about job opportunities all the time, which is a beautiful thing. And that's the power of networking. Got it. So that's a rewind though, because you still were setting up those meetings in advance, even before this situation. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, that can be intimidating to be able to mm. put time on the calendar. Mm. I got you. With some I follow of those people in those different areas. Yeah. Um, what was it that kind of gave you the confidence, but also the know-how to know how to navigate setting up a meeting with an executive? Or I, I honestly, honestly, yeah. it was fear. It was fear. So I was in a rotational program. It was ending, and I needed to get a job. Okay. And I was told to meet with some people. To be honest, I'll be mean, completely honest. But I saw over time when you meet with somebody once, meet with them twice. It's three levels to it. So first level is um, visibility. They see you. They have conversations. Okay, I know Kyle. Then mm -hmm. if you meet with you look enough times, it's credibility, it's sage two. Yeah. Okay, well Kyle seems to be credible, he's on time, we have good conversations. And the last is trust. So it's visibility, credibility, and trust. And I seen that happen once I got into the stage of my rotation was ending, I had to find a new job. And I saw I started building trust with these different people because I just kept on meeting with them over and over again and having really good conversations. Um, a mixture of, again, personal and professional kind of conversations. Not all what happened during this weekend or not all this what happened at work, but a blend of both, yeah. you know? That's, that's dope, man. It's crazy. Um, the mantra, the slogan for my show is visibility builds credibility. Wow. And you just, I didn't tell you that. I did not tell you that. I did not tell you that's that. Crazy. I did not tell that's crazy. Tim that. That is crazy. Um, and you literally just spit it back out because I truly believe that yeah, yeah. visibility builds credibility. Um, and Trust. Trust also. Is, yeah, trust is after trust that. Also, That's trust what happens. Is. If you become very credible, if somebody thinks that you're a credible person, they will trust you with information. Mm -hmm. And I talk about networking and networking with executives. If somebody trusts you, they'll let you know, hey, there's a reorganization about to happen over here. I trust you to tell you that there's going to be an opening. Would you be opening the opportunity to come on my team or that team over there? Because they have a wider scope, if you will, of different yeah. you know, organization. You know what I'm saying? From the executive perspective, though, were you meeting with people who only were in your area, or were you meeting with nah, a wide variety? I was wild. I was, I was, I was machine gun Kelly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was here. I was, I was sending everybody out there. Uh, had a lot of different targets. Um, some conversations were really good and uh, engaging. Some weren't. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, I tailored up my networking now, where I only really meet with people that are engaging. Gotcha. But, um, but yeah, I was definitely trying to make sure I had met enough people that knew who I was, what I was good at, and if they had opportunities, they let me know. And that's, yeah, kind of, and that's important. And I'll be honest, I've never had a, I've never applied to a job. Specifically, mm -hmm. any job I've had, yes. um, I got to do my network. Yes. And I think that, I, that's why I agree with you. Yeah. Like, those were people that I met who provided me information and I was able to take that information mm -hmm. and do something with it. Uh, if I wanted to leave my job, if I didn't, it typically happened because I knew someone. Um, and now I'm on the recruiting side of things yes. where I truly know you don't need to apply to the job unless you got a referral. Yes. You, you can't apply. Yeah. That does work, but this means so much more if someone is able to put your name at the top of the list or they say, hey, make sure you talk to him or make sure you do that. Because um, I think it's super important when you're thinking about networking, your next move or the current move you in, to be able to know that you have support, but mm -hmm. also know that you have someone that can speak up for you. So I don't I was going to say something. Yeah. I truly believe that if you are a superior networker where you take it very seriously, you could skip job interviews and collect job offers. Again, skip job interviews and collect job offers. Skip them? Skip them. And that kind of talks to your point about never interviewing yeah. for a job because yeah. you had a strong network of people. Yeah. So that's, I just want yeah. to yeah. piggyback yeah. on that. I went through the process, but yes. I felt very confident that yeah. I was probably going to get the job. Yeah. So yes. very similar. Yes. I didn't skip the process, but I knew that if I put the app in, I most likely was gonna get it, um, but I also trusted in myself through that process too. Um, but you feel as though you can 
maybe skip the yeah, process yep. if you know the right person, you yep. know the, the the hiring manager, yep. you know that person, yep. they know you and what you can bring to yep. the table. It's a whole different conversation when you meet with somebody and you have them tell me about yourself, tell me a time with this, tell me a time with that. When you, they already know you, they already know you're interested in a job, they already know you're interested in a job. So it's more like, okay, well, what you want to do when you start? Yeah. That's a different conversation. Yeah. You're still interviewing technically, mm -hmm. but the conversation is a lot different. Um, you have a level of comfortability that you, the job is kind of yes in the pocket, which on the flip side, for people that don't know, is that when they apply for jobs blindly and coldly, there's a, there's a possibility that that job is already taken and you just had to post it just Absolutely. because they had to post it. Absolutely. So people don't really realize that, oh, I applied to like 10 jobs, I applied mm -hmm. to 10 jobs. That's not the best approach. The best approach is to have 10 people that you know, not 10 applications per day. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's Absolutely. a whole different a mantra when you're looking for a job opportunity. Yeah, I tell people all the time, if you know someone at that company, you need to talk to them before you apply. Yes. Don't just throw your name in the, in the list of a thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. Go talk to that person. If you trust them and you feel as though they will put in that word for you, then build that relationship because yep. it's 10 times better than yes. knowing your name in there, fixing yes. your resume, paying somebody $200 to fix your resume. There's, um, there's so many tiers to this. So, you, so <laughs> another tier is that what if the job doesn't look like what it looks like on paper? So if you look online and you see a job and you read it and like, oh man, I want to do that. That's a perfect job for me. And then you work and you get that job. I mean, this job sucks. I don't want to do this job at all. It'd be different if you met the hiring manager, talked to them, and had a deep conversation. Yeah. And you know, you know what? This one's not one for me. Yeah. That's better than you taking time, applying, being stressed over it, interviewing, and then working, and then find out once you get your first paycheck, like, I'm not getting paid enough to do this. Yeah, and you're unhappy. Unhappy. You went through that whole entire yeah. process. Yeah. Um, and that's a good note, uh, just to do your research. Yes. Um, and doing your research is part of the networking yes. experience, for sure. Yes. Um, so that's from a job perspective and a work perspective. But we spend a lot of our time at our jobs, and I mm -hmm. always tell people that. Mm -hmm. So embrace the space that you're yes. in because you spend a lot of time in your job. Yep. But I also tell people you need to want to build a network outside of that too mm -hmm. because you have a sphere of people that you're still going to want to lean on because you may want to leave your job. Yep. You may want to get in the community. You may want to be more philanthropic in a number of ways. Talk to me about building your network outside of your job because like I said, you were able to build that network at the job. I know you do yeah. at, at where you work, yeah. but if I could guess, yeah. you probably got a larger network outside of the, outside yeah. of your job. That has to do with being out there, um, being at social events, um, putting yourself out there to get to meet people and being open to having discussions. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't, and I'm kind of an introvert as well. Like everybody's like, I'm an introvert, extrovert. Or you know, like everybody has different Different, levels different, of, different levels of introvert. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, uh, I've tailored myself to know that it's important to put yourself in different environments to get to meet different people. If you don't put yourself in different environments, you won't get a chance to meet different people in different mm -hmm. circles. That's why I have, I would say, a wide circle of people that I know socially because I've put myself in different environments where it's uh, you know young black professionals or just um, dentists in Charlotte or whatever. Like yeah. you know, you kind of get to know different people mm -hmm. and. In that environment, you get to meet people and get to know them personally and professionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's big. Uh, I think I'm a big component of cultural competency. Yep. If you can understand someone's background, you can understand where they come from, you can understand exactly why they maybe do what they do, you can have a better conversation mm -hmm. around that. Um, I know people who only will go to networking events that fit their mode. Mm. They only will go to networking events that maybe um, they feel comfortable in. You're going to see the same people there yep. that you've always seen. Yep. Um, one thing I really uh, appreciate about you is, and I've seen you do it a few times, you'll show up to someone's event to support them. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's something I think a lot of people don't do. They don't have the reciprocal value. Mm -hmm. Go to your event, yep. I'm going to come to yours. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. It, it should be that way. Um, of creating that reciprocal value of showing people that I care for you in this moment and you can do the same for yeah. me. And it doesn't have to be pressure. No. No pressure. Yeah. But it's a natural thing that you do of showing up to your event. Um, I hosted a conference about, with the Urban League, I hosted a conference about six months ago yep. now. Yep. And you showed up. Yep. <laughs> with yeah. oh, you was there. <laughs> you was there. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. You didn't know me long. Yeah. But you you came to the event yeah you you 100 you met people there yeah. you 
participated in yeah. it fully yeah. and you were main um you were you were fully a part of it and i really do appreciate that yeah. i've been to your events mm -hmm. um, i met a ton of people there mm -hmm. i got people from your events that's going to be on the podcast Dope. and i just think that reciprocal return yeah. between the two isn't about because because Tim came to my event, I need to, I need to get his mm -hmm. event. It's just a natural thing yeah. that I think we should yeah. continue to do to definitely. support each other. Definitely, definitely, um, it, it is a natural progression of just support. If you want to get support, you definitely have to support in some shape, form, or fashion. Absolutely. I feel like showing up and being present is the best way to show support um, when possible. Mm -hmm. And if not possible, just let them know. You know what I'm saying? So um, I know you have a different events. I know the causes that you have, and I and I like the fact that you are helping. I like the, the, the reason behind the event. So I like the reason behind it. And because of that, I want to continue to support it. Even moving forward, if you have something in the future, if there's any way I could do a fundraiser, whatever I could do, I'll continue to support that because I love the fact that you're helping other young people and the impact you're having into the community is big. And it could, it's going to be bigger, right? Um, what I do is just, you know, just a humble servant. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at myself and what I do. Um, if I didn't get any, a dime for what I do, or if I don't, if nobody shows up to my events, I'm still gonna put the events out there. Still, still continue. Yes, with exactly. It. And I, I think that's how it should be. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do this stuff regardless. Yeah. Uh, it's more about it, it's more about the impact. Yeah. Uh, like it's not about the dollar amount. It's not about you know saying we had 300 people at the event. I don't care if it's three people in the room. Yes. If those three people had an amazing relationship and they built it from your event, then you it was a success honestly it's always the right people supposed to be in the room no matter yeah. what no matter what you think no matter how you feel if it's not the best turnout the people that are supposed to be there were supposed to be there if it rained outside if it was different some some crazy something crazy happened you know whoever's supposed to be there are the people that's supposed to be in the room and you just take advantage of who's there yeah not absolutely. who's not you know um, and like i said man i've met a ton of people from your events so yeah i do want to talk about that so yep is it every month? Every other month? I feel like you, yeah, you, you yeah, been grinding. It's about yeah, every it, month. It's, it's, it's supposed to be every month, and it has been. COVID hit, you know, it, it hit, I hit a wall during COVID like everybody tell, else. Tell the audience the name of your event. So my last name is Nurse. So my, no, and so it's Nurse Monthly Mingle. Again, Nurse Monthly Mingle. It's not for nurses. You don't have to be a nurse to come up. But the beauty thing, beautiful thing is that nurses do come. And it's yeah. funny when they do come and show like, oh, I thought it was for nurses. <laughs> but I, I specifically say, like, if you read the you descript read description, right? yeah, yeah, I said, I said yeah. bankers, lawyers, you know, blue collar, you know, yeah. all professionals are welcome. Um, even on the Instagram, I say nurses, our last name is hashtag nurses, our last name. So people can know that it's just specific, not specific for nurses. But anyway, professionals come out, they mix and mingle, and they get to walk away with meeting somebody new. Yeah. And that's kind of the goal of the whole thing. If you meet somebody new, I did my job. I don't care if you met them and you don't meet them again, but at least you meet somebody you never know, met before. Um, I've been to other events where you go there, you don't talk to anybody, and the event goes, and it's pretty cool, and it ends, and you don't really get any of that interaction. I kind of push people, like, you know, gently push people to kind of, hey, there's people over there, you know, meet some people over there, because you just never know who's in the room. Yeah, and, and it's a, what I really like about your events is, it's couples that show up. Yeah. And, for me, I've been married for two years, two and a half now. My, my time is getting <laughs> out there. But um, throughout that time, I felt like I've been to events and I've been able to network freely. Even when I was with my wife, uh, when we were just girlfriend, yep. boyfriend. Yep. You still could be freely, but when you're married, it's still a little different. Yeah, it's, a little different. It's, it's a little, little different. different. it's a little different. It's a little different. A little different. Um, yeah, your events, I feel comfortable yeah. talking to. Yeah. Majority, it's, you got a lot of women that just, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's say 60 40. 60, 60, 40. <laughs> uh, I feel comfortable being able to naturally network yeah. with a lot of people yeah. at the without feeling like, pressure, without, without feeling the pressure, somebody give you the somebody you. sexual eyes and all like that, yeah, 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 all of that, nah, all of that. Nah, nah. So, I think that's an important environment to have because I know some people who may shy away from those type of things because they don't feel like it made me pressure on to yeah. go there with my wife. Yeah. Like, I feel like you should be able to go somewhere yeah. with your wife. Yeah. You should be able to go somewhere with your girl yeah. and be able to still accomplish these relationships, yeah. these goals, and meet new people in those same Especially if your partner wants to see you grow whatever, when whatever Absolutely. profession you do, um, if they're in your corner, they should want you to meet other people and it's not going to be, oh, you're a guy, so you're calling me guys. Like, mm -hmm. it, you can make a, make a great business deal with a female and be fine to be all business. Absolutely. And that should be possible. It shouldn't be a... Uh, and I'm saying genders, but let me just yeah. not say genders. Partners, right? So you want somebody to, to be, to be. I don't want to offend anybody, but yeah. So as far as far as um, um, the openness of it, I try to set the tone. 
Um, I try to put myself out there as, yep, I'm married. Even when I'm on the microphone, it's like, yeah, me and my wife. I let people know that, and I don't hide away from it. And it doesn't affect the conversations. It doesn't affect the, the vibe. I don't mm -hmm. um, feel um, that I offend anybody, or I don't feel like anybody tries to pressure me in any weird way that yeah. kind of throws off from the professionalism of the networking mm -hmm. event. Um, so it's just very fortunate that I, that I was able to set the tone. And people who come to the events, who still come to the events, uh, know that, okay, this is really a m professional mixer. Yeah. Um, a cool professional mixer. That's kind of a kind of, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not stuffy. Yeah. It's a very yeah. They got a the DJ, all the songs got love. the music. Yeah, might have a little trap a little in the background, yeah, a little yeah, little yeah. jazz trap version yeah. or whatever. Uh, but it's it's cool, and um, yeah. I'm very fortunate to keep it going, and I'm just going to keep it going as long as I can. Um, I I think there are a lot of venues that doesn't get exposure to black professionals, to be frank. Mm -hmm. And I try to bring that to those venues on days that they're not packed. So I would say, hey, you know, venue, venue, ven, venue, you know, A, I have about, I could bring about 200 people here on a Wednesday. Would you be interested in having an event? And some people are like, yeah, yeah. And some are like, no. And I have to keep moving. But I want to make sure I try to marry those two things together as mm -hmm. often as possible. And it's the exposure piece. Yes. You want those people to know that. Um, black professionals, we can bring the same yep. good energy yep. as any other group. Yep. Um, and I can imagine there hasn't been a lot of groups that have been disappointed with or there's no mingle because it's been nothing but positivity. Yeah. Um, I've seen a number of people, I've watched people make deals. Yeah. I've watched people become new friends. Yep. I've had, I have two people, um, women that are going to be on the podcast that I've met at your event. That's dope. Um, and That's I just dope. think those type of partnerships, those deals, um, can't be made if we don't get out into these different spaces mm -hmm. and really decide to meet new people outside of our normal yeah. sphere. Um, any success stories or any like specific events? That you've been doing this I a long time. Two that yeah, come to mind. So one is there's a couple that actually is married now, three years married. They met at one of my events. Ooh, that's I had a that's huge. I had a mixer at a spot called Sip, which is on the corner of Fifth and Tryon. Yeah. Um, it's a downstairs spot. We had a pretty good event there. Um, I guess, you know, young man, met, met, he was about to lead the event and he met a young lady and mm -hmm. they started dating after the event and they got married. So I ran to him, I will say maybe like a little bit after the wedding, he said, said you, I got married because of you, man. <laughs> and, it, and I actually videotaped it. So I have a video, if you ever go, get a chance, go to Nurse Monthly Mingle on Gmail, I'm um, sorry, on IG. Mm -hmm. And I have a video of him talking about how he met her and they had, love his life. I don't know if, know if they have kids now, but they met like literally at the event. He said, I was about to leave. And then I saw her come in and it just went from there. And I'm so thankful I just came to the event. I wasn't gonna come out. So that's one really cool success story I like to tell. The second one, uh, there's a black owned pharmacy called Premier Pharmacy. It's on Monroe Road. It's owned by a gentleman named Martez Prince. Yeah, so Monroe Road, like before you get to the Wendover. Yeah. Um, is uh, uh, called Premier Pharmacy, one of the few black-owned pharmacies in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. The owner name is Martez Prince. Martez is one of my early supporters to my events. His funding group, he found us at one of the events. So he came mm -hmm. to one of the events, said, uh, he's, he's working at like Walgreens as a pharmacist. I'm thinking about open, open my own pharmacy, but he needs money yeah. to start the pharmacy. Yeah. And he found people at the event to help mm -hmm. fund his pharmacy. So his original cohort of funding came from people that came to the event, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so now crazy. years later, he's, I think it's been open now for like, I think he's, I mean, he's like six years now, yeah, been doing it. He's in it. Yeah, yeah he's even Oprah. Been. So Oprah came to Charlotte, Oprah came to Charlotte. Hold up. Two years ago. Oprah came to your event? No, 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 oh, no, 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 I was saying that, no, 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 no and did a whole show at his pharmacy because he's yeah. one of the few black owned pharmacies in Charlotte. But that's originated yeah. from a nurse month yeah. in Mingle. Yeah. Though, so yeah. I think that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, I think. Um, I'm glad you told that story because yeah. that's the power of networking yeah. and being in the space. Yeah. And who's gonna be in the room, yeah. who's in the room. And when you're in the room, so this is the next piece I want to talk about. Okay. Uh, because a lot of people say, be in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm a big proponent of saying, be in the room and be ready. Yeah. So yeah. there are a number of people who say, be in the room. Yep. I say, be ready when you're in the room, mm -hmm. because when you meet the person that you need to meet, you want to be able to have some level yes. of value. Yes. You want to have some level of yes. just small conversation, yes. minute conversation to be able to have with them. What's your perspective on that? Because I'm going to tell you a story. I've been in a room with Magic Johnson. Mm. 
I've been in the room with Rich Paul. Mm. I've been in the room with Joe Biden. But I did not know what to do when yeah. I was in the room with them yeah. at that moment. At that moment. Growth over the time, that was probably six, seven years ago, yeah. four years ago, Rich and now Paul, I... four years ago, Magic Johnson. I know six years ago, Joe Biden. Yeah. But in that moment, I didn't feel as though I had anything to offer them. Or well, what was I going to say other than, can I get a picture with you? Yeah. So what is, what's your perspective on being in the room and now being ready and being able to add value to the person that you meet? They say stay ready to get ready. All right, mm -hmm. you hear that a lot. I think that um, if you have a business that you, ha you own or thinking about owning a business, mm -hmm. that's a good way to kind of practice your pitch. I think you should practice your pitch with your friends, people you know that's close to you. Um, having a one minute conversation to get somebody's attention about what you have going on, mm -hmm. I think that helps a lot. I also think going to more events helps. So if you had more events. So now moving forward, if they're in the room, you have the experience to know kind of what happened. Right. We're all going to have the experience. We're not going to have know what to say. Look back like, man, I wish I would have said this, or I wish I would have brought this up in conversation. Um, but you need to practice that yeah. and you need to show up and be out there. So yeah. continue to put yourself out there, practice in environments, definitely go to mixers and meet people and get used to saying your spiel. Because yeah. you can have it in your head and then you're in the elevator with this you know, billionaire <laughs> yeah. and you don't know how to even get the, the, out your mind to your, the right words to impact the person. Um, to have that aha moment, like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I should get your car, let me get your information, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful thing to being ready to, to say a quick yeah. one minute spiel on whatever you have going on, whatever, whatever. business, yeah, whatever, whatever business, it is. Business, yep. nonprofit, yep. a social club, yep. a group, yep. book club, whatever yep. it may be, if you think that person can add value to it, be able to have that elevator yep. pitch or that spiel ready. Yep. I think that's the thing that's jumped over. I know people get in the room, they get in the room and they don't talk to no one. Yeah. Or they talk to the person they came with. That's, that's, and I'm very anti that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've done it. You're like, hey, y'all go talk. I've seen you. Yeah. I've seen you. You go yeah. to the event. You're like, y'all go talk to them. Go, yeah. go talk to them. Yeah. And that goes back to your icebreakers. Mm -hmm. You have a number of various icebreakers that gets people talking. Yes. Um, and they eventually lead to an incentive that yeah. you have in most yep. of your events. Yep. Talk yep. to me about that. Is that a tool of mechanism that you use to 100%. ensure mm -hmm. that people make those connections? This guarantees you meet somebody new. Yeah. So if you come to any of my events, I get guarantee. You know how you have guarantees? I guarantee, 100% guarantee, guarantee that you meet somebody new. Because when you walk in, you get a, a sheet of paper. On the sheet of paper has uh, two truths and a lie. Uh, I'm lying. It's two lies and one truth. Mm -hmm. So it'll say one sentence like, you know, this weekend I'm going to do blank. And you could say whatever you're going to do. But one of them has to be the truth. You walk around the room, people have a conversation, and they go, oh, what are you gonna do this weekend? Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, guess, and they guess, which are, and then you can start a conversation after that. Yeah. Um, meet with enough people, you have enough conversations, and then you, after you know it, you, you done met you know, 20 people yeah. that you never would've met before, just because yeah. people are walking around uh, with the game. Um, I went to a mixer, to be honest, that had a, a, the opposite, um, two, two truths and a lie, and it wasn't, I felt like it was a good way to start, and it, was, it, it, it made me think, oh, I need to bring this to my event. Yeah. But I want to change it so it's a little more more uh, interactive and more have a gaming piece to it where yeah. people get points. Yeah. And somebody with the most points get a prize. And usually the prize is a gift card or some sort of monetary uh, gift that yeah. $50, $25 or something like that. But um, I think that it's important to kind of motivate others to do the, do the interactions. Yeah. And once you feel calm and cool, even after the game is over and I give away the prize, people are still playing the game Absolutely. when there's no more prizes to go. Yeah, like, yeah. But hey, here's the prize, here's the winner. And then the, the, let the event continue. And people are still kind of going back and forth and working the room and walking mm -hmm. around and getting into the flow of uh, quote unquote networking. And they broke the ice. Like, yeah. you done it about two or three people. Yeah. Like, you ready to get to yeah. anybody. Yep. Like, and if there is one person that you want to talk to, yep. that you yep. don't know how to start it, yep. that's an easy way yes. to start a conversation 100%. is with the, the icebreaker. You may have been wanting to talk to this person for a long time. You mm -hmm. still ain't figured out exactly what your spill is, but the icebreaker yes. will allow for you to do that. And then you go into your conversation. So what do you do? So what, what do you do? And then from there, it becomes a, a mutual agreement and just a mutual conversation. hundred so percent. I do appreciate that because I met a good amount of people um, through it. Some of those people 
weren't in my industry. Some of those people were. Yeah. But in general, I just learned a lot. Like, yes. I'm not in trucking, but I had like a 45 minute long conversation with this guy that was in the trucking industry. Mm -hmm. and he just talked about a number of things that he's involved in. And then I was like, dang, I got some tips for you because I'm not in it, but I've worked in like, I've, I've had a, a side hustle in logistics before. Mm -hmm. I used to be at Amazon. So, yeah. so I was telling him about different outlets I used to use as an Amazon seller when I didn't want to use UPS and FedEx. Mm. And he ended up, I saw him at another one of your events. He ended up becoming one of the venues. He joined the website that I used to use wow. to be able to transport goods wow. on more of like a individual contract mm -hmm. basis. So he didn't have to go through like the large suppliers mm -hmm. to find um, routes. Mm -hmm. He used the website that I used mm -hmm. if I just wanted to, if you wanted to move and transport things. So I thought that was so interesting. Like, I'm not in that industry, but I just had one thing that I did in that industry. That helped and him. I gave it to him. Mm. And he was like, yo, I got this box truck now. And I don't have to wait on nobody no That's more. That's perfect. I'm just going to get it. Like, That's I'm putting perfect. my stuff up there. I'm accepting bids, and I'm going to get it. That's and amazing. I thought that was super dope. Like, he didn't expect to meet me. No. I didn't even expect to give him that. Yeah. Um, but it happened naturally, and um, it was good to see that he was able to even control his schedule then, control his time, and eventually bring in more revenue for him. One, one thing I do want to note, there's a lot of stories like that, that people come to my events and they get impacted through a conversation, mm -hmm. a word from somebody else that they wouldn't have known. It's so powerful uh, when you get around a group of like-minded people, what could come from it. Um, I do want to say that if you want to make more money, if you want to do more in your industry, if you want to learn more things, you have to get out there and meet more people. Mm -hmm. That's where the big deals happen. You know, people say, oh, yeah. they went golfing and they made a million dollar deal. Yeah. That that stuff is real. Yeah. I don't golf, I'm not gonna lie, but I do other things. Do. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but the, the, the idea is the same, right? You yeah. Get out there, you talk, you be open about what you're doing to somebody else, and they might know somebody else. They may have a piece of information that could take your business from here to here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I just think, I truly believe your network is your net worth. Yeah. Some people can. Yes. You can overstate that enough, yes. but it is, it's the truth. If you can really meet more people, you can build that sphere of mm -hmm. influence. Yes. You can build that board of directors. You can build mentors, sponsors, or just peers who can pour into you. You will have the wealth of information. Mm -hmm. You have the wealth of a sphere of people where you might not even be paying for events no more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just it's something as small as a, net, a networking event that may be exclusive, but if you know a person that can help you get into that event, you're in there and that will allow for you to potentially make another deal. Mm -hmm. um, so I always tell people like, don't sleep on the people who are yes. to the left and the right of you. Don't don't feel as though you have to be just talking to the executive. Mm -hmm. um, you can meet those people in your sphere um, and they can really help you in a number of ways. There's this thing, um, and I'm trying to learn more about it, but a guy told me about it, it's called strong ties and weak ties. Mm -hmm. Strong ties are probably the people that you probably talk to on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. Weak ties are people that you may see on LinkedIn. They follow you, they mm -hmm. may connect with yep. you. You see them post, you see yep. them post, um, but there's a gap in between that. How do you make these weak ties, how do you make the weak ties? Strong ties. Strong ties. Yep. And it takes intentionality. Mm -hmm. Reaching out, mm -hmm. saying hello, mm -hmm. how's your day? What's coming up next? I see you got this event going on. Yep. You got any more going on? Yep. I love to show up. And it talks about how weak ties can become strong ties. And then you'll start seeing a number of weak ties with intentionality start becoming strong ties in your network and your information mm. a lot more. So I want to share that with you. That's good. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. I like absolutely it. Absolutely. I like so. it. And it's like six degrees of separation yes. also. Um, yes. That, you know, there's another story I got for you. So. Um, I'm from a small town in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. You probably ain't even been to Eastern North Carolina because you. Wilson, <laughs> Wilson, you, uh, Rocky okay, Mount. Okay, you better Rocky. Snow, Snow, uh, Whoa, Snow Hill. Snow Hill. Snow Hill. Yeah. I live ten minutes from there. My hometown is Kinston, North Carolina. Kinston, yep. Yeah. So you been in North Carolina a little yeah, bit. You've been around yeah. Yeah. So we have a private jet company in Kinston. There's only like five or six private jet companies across mm. the entire country. Yeah. Um, thirty seconds from my house. Mm. My goal, and I put it on my podcast, my goal is I'm going to meet the CEO from the private jet company. We've engaged a little bit mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. We've done this, we've done that. But that's my goal. The companies went public. Kinston has 18,000 people. The companies went public. Um, they have a number of investments from 
a number of different investors all across the country. Hmm. They have celebrities that are coming into Kinston to fly in and out to overseas. Huh. Um, it's called Fly Exclusive. Nice. Fly Exclusive, but 30 seconds from my house, um, it's, a, it's a small boutique private jet firm. But my goal is, this is something that my city hasn't seen, but I want to be able to expose them to these type of things. And I think it's important that we do that because a lot of people wouldn't connect my small town with those type of large assets or those large forms of business. Mm -hmm. But if we can start showing people yeah. that, you know, you got this huge mm -hmm. IPO company mm -hmm. right down the street from the high school, mm -hmm. right down the street from mm -hmm. the community college, and those are the type of things that you can potentially become. So my goal is to really have him start telling his story more on how, why he brought it to Kinston. Yeah. Why people like yeah. who grew up in Kinston yeah. can potentially get involved in a career in aviation, mm -hmm. a career in analytics, mm -hmm. a career in revenue management. Yeah, learn a business. And learn a business. Yeah. Because we've never seen that before in yeah. the city. So we can provide exposure to it and uh, I'm working on it. Just nice, like nice, keep working gonna, on it. Make, make, that, make, that, make that weak tie strong. Yeah, weak tie is gonna become strong yeah. because uh, we have some small connections through LinkedIn, yep. but I want to make that a strong connection. Yeah. I, I can literally, I see planes come out of my backyard. Huh. That's how close I live to the facility. That's dope. And that's just so dope. But I promise you, out of 18,000 people, there are probably 1,000 to 1,500 people know that this place is mm -hmm. there. Uh, but I've been doing my research on it, and I just think it's so important that we know who's in our yes. backyard, who's in our facility, in our arm's reach. Um, because I think if more people knew, um, more people could eventually become some of those things that they, yeah. that they see yeah. um, out there. Yeah, so. 100%. It, it, when, you, when you see somebody at that level that's um, obtainable for resources and information, it gives you hope that you could do the same thing or go even farther yeah. than that person that's going. Yeah, so one thing I forgot to mention is that I actually own a career coaching business called Careers in Action. Um, uh, I uh, help individuals learn how to do two things specifically. One, uh, how to find a professional fit. A lot of people in corporate America don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Working five, ten years in corporate America still don't know what they want to yeah. be when they grow up. Um, I have a strategy around kind of finding the fit. Like where does your passion meet profession? Mm -hmm. Where does those two things meet? And how can you get there? Yeah. The second part is all about networking, right? How do you become a superior networker? How do you get to get, meet people like the CEO you talked about yeah. and let them know who you are personally and professionally mm -hmm. and do business with them moving forward? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of specific strategies. I'm actually writing a book on the topic as well. Um, the book is called Skyscraper, okay. and it's about those same two things I just talked about. And uh, it's a lot of strategy and a lot of detail, but the main thing is to help other individuals find a great job that they love to be in, mm -hmm. right? And have a vast network of leaders that kind of have their back. Yeah. That only happens if you put in the work. And people who are willing to put in the work will see a lot of great results. Yeah, and that's important. Find something that you want to do. Sometimes people can put corporate America, America in a bubble where they're like, I, it's nothing I want to do there. Yeah, there's a lot of jobs in yeah, corporate America yeah. if you find the right yeah, fit. Yeah. Um, I used to work in marketing straight out of college. Mm -hmm. I used to help out a lot with the diversity initiatives. Mm -hmm. Now I worked my way into diversity. Yep. I didn't get into that just because I just was a good person. Mm -hmm. First, I had to network my way mm -hmm. and learn and meet a lot of people and put in the work to get into yeah, that. Yeah. Now, I'm in the diversity heavy, but I have dreams of wanting to merge diversity and community and external affairs. Yes. So I have to start building my way into the external affairs and community relations side of it. Um, so one, careers in action. Yep. They should definitely reach out to you for that. Yes. Um, yes. And if you ever want to meet the guy outside of like shoot him an email, you yeah. go to a nurse monthly mingle. Yeah. He'll be there. Yeah. So on uh, Instagram, it's nurse monthly mingle, spelled exactly how it sounds. Nurse monthly mingle. Um, you find about events on there. And then for careers in action, I always say go to my LinkedIn page as well. So mm -hmm. proof is in the pudding. If you go to my LinkedIn page, you will literally see about 25 to 30 different. Um, recommendations at the bottom. People had re results of, hey, you helped me get a job over here. Hey, you impacted my career by doing this. So you know how real it is when I kind of get in front of you and talk to you about how can I get your career from here to here, making more money and actually enjoy making more money. Yeah. Absolutely, you know? yeah, and that's super important. We need more people that look like us. Yes. That can be those coaches for us. Um, and like you said, this is corporate America where your expertise is. Yeah. I can imagine if it's yeah. any type of expertise, yeah. you probably still support yes. 
um, with a number of skills that you built from a networking perspective. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you being able to even drop these jewels out there because you got to stay ready to be ready. Yes. Visibility builds credibility included yeah. with trust. Yes. Um, and I think yes. that trust piece is one that I really want to yeah. continue to hone in on. Yeah. You, know, you can be in the room, people can see you, but yeah. then how do you build trust with yes. them? Yes. Um, and I think that's something they could probably learn if they met 100%, 100%, 100%. Um, uh, before we close, I wanted to just talk to you about something I observed. So you mentioned you got a little bit of introvertedness in you also. Yes, yes. Um, and you're still an extrovert. You still got some extrovert. Introvert, a little extrovert. Like, you know, it's a little bit. But you yeah. consider yourself more <laughs> introvert? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. You would have fooled me. But <laughs> that when, when you say that, I get what you may mean because at your events, you observe a lot. Too. Yes. Yes, I watch. a lot of people yeah. mingling, yeah. but I do see that you're observing. Yeah. Um, you're not always. Mm -mm. You do yeah. meet and talk to a lot yeah. of people, but you're observing a lot. Why is that? Uh, I, I don't want to chop the quote up, but it's more power when you say less things. You get, you have more power in your hands when you say less things, and uh, I think that I'm very good with reading people. I always been good at reading people. I used to play cards all the time, and like I'm just good at reading people, and I could tell when um, when a vibe is good, and I like I like just feeling the energy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so you will catch me at my event not talking to anybody. I walk yeah. through I walk through the party, I don't say anything. I kind of make sure that people yeah. are good, and and I. Like just literally just enjoy the environment, yeah. but when somebody talks to me, I'm ready to talk. Like yeah. it's not so that's the that's the extrovert part. Like and I, yeah, I'm not being answered. Second, second somebody's ready to talk, I'm ready to jump into it. But yeah. but left to my own will, I was just sitting outside, I eat a little bit, might get a drink, chill. And if I see somebody that's kind of by themselves, I would like lean towards that person yeah. and try to talk to them. So that's kind of where I, I like to do. So if I see you know this person over here kind of just looking shy and scared of the environment, I would literally just walk over and say, hey, what's going on? Welcome. How did you yeah. hear about the event? And start a conversation that way. Yeah. I'd rather do that than kind of jump into groups that are already talking of three or four people. So that's kind of gotcha. what my thing yeah. is. I mean, even at other events, I might do that at your event. If I'm at your event and I see a kid over there just, just kind of sitting by himself, I would literally just go over there and start talking to him. Hey, man, what's going on? Well, you know, because you, know, you just never know. There might be a fear there that just needs to be talked out. Mm -hmm. um, a story just popped in my mind. There's a conference called National Black NBA. It was in Indianapolis one year. There was a, um, I was out eating with just lunch by myself. There was an Asian individual sitting right next to me looking sad. Hey, what's going on, man? Start talking. He was upset because every time he went to a booth, they asked him if he had his citizenship. Mm -hmm. He's American. He didn't need a citizenship. Like, he's just, like he's, every he time we he need, I So I, I recommended to him way back when, I don't know where he is now, years later, but I recommend go to the booth and first thing you say, the first thing you say, mm -hmm is that I'm American, so don't even, don't even say I'm yeah. American, it didn't jump into the conversation. Break, break the ice. I ran into him the second day, so it's two days. The second day, he got an offer. I sent him, I swear to you, I met him the next day, he got an offer. He said, hey man, thank you for that recommendation. Yeah. I got an offer from whatever company at the time, and I was just happy, yeah. this was before my career coaching business started, but yeah. I saw the power of just like being honest and open, and he wouldn't, have, he was looking sad, but I felt like it was obvious to me that you're American, you don't even say that you have to have a citizen just because the way you look, yeah. that's wrong to people to assume that For sure. because of the conference and how it's set up. But yeah. you need to put yourself out there early. Absolutely. And then, then go through the things you got. one piece of advice yes. that he needed, yes. and, one, and one bit of confidence too. He was going to tell them that probably later in the yes. conversation. Yes. He just he did it up front. Yes. And it led to. Yes, it, break, it breaks down the wall. Breaks the wall. It breaks the wall down because when you're at a conference, if you're at the booth, you see a lot of people from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And once you tell them that you need us, you can't you know, provide sponsorship for a citizenship. Or it's a term I can't think of right authorization, now. Authorization, work authorization. Yeah. yeah. Then, it's, it's the, then it's kind of, they're sad, they walk away, yeah. right? He didn't need it. Just because of the way he looked, he just assumed that. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. Assume yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. And, uh, that's unfortunate, but yep. I'm glad you were able to give that yep. piece of advice that were able to kind of build that confidence and eventually led to the goal. He got the offer. Yes, yes. That's the bottom line, yeah. he got the offer. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome to hear. Yeah. Um, and for curators who create events, observation is key too. Observation is key. You don't have to jump into it no, all the time. take your time. Take your time. Listen. Listen. listen to the room, listen to the people. Somebody can tell you a lot about themselves without saying a word. Yeah. And and networking. Listen yeah. too. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, I, I appreciate it, man. You you've dropped some gems here. Um, Tim, we could do this. Yeah. I, can, I can bring you back hey, on. Man. I know you got a lot more gems to drop. KBP. Um, I made it. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we are in the birth stages of it, but we're going to keep rolling. Yeah. You know? But I, I appreciate it. I will say, though, 
even though I'm in the birth stages, I appreciate every single guest. Every single guest has been super impactful. Mm -hmm. um, every single guest has been able to expose people to um, the tactics that they've been mm -hmm. able to take, the way that they've been able to move in different areas. A lot of people like to tell the story, but they don't like to tell the tactics. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate you for being able to take time. And Definitely, man. Thank, thank you for inviting me, put me on the show, man. I feel, I feel honored that I made it. I'm here, <laughs> I'm able to tell my story, and um, yeah. hopefully it helps somebody else. Um, and that's really what I want to do. Make sure Absolutely. I help somebody else. Absolutely. And we're going to be at another Nurse Month in Mingo. Okay. If you are a young professional, I'm not even going to say black young professional. Yeah, if so you are a young professional, if you yes. anybody, yes. if you want to come out and meet more people in a meaningful space with a vibe, with, you know, my guy be having drink specials, you have everything, um, be sure to come out and check out a Nurse Month in Mingo. Um, one of the best events I've been to to introduce me to the nucleus of people in Charlotte. Thank you. Um, so I appreciate you for being able to have that platform. So thank you again for being on the Kyle Brown Podcast. Visibility builds credibility. Yes. And we're going to work on the trust part. All right.